Hi, I hope you can hear me as I'm out here in my favorite astronomy spot. Uh, we're going to get a look at the moon this evening. Uh, by the way, what you hear in the background are frogs. I'm here uh, in a marsh area. Maybe you'll hear uh, a goose or two, maybe a duck. Uh, there's some geese around as well looking for places to nest and looking for mates. Uh, there's some ducks flying around too. Uh, but <clears throat> what we're looking for tonight, what we're interested in tonight, is the moon. And you can see the moon right over there. Uh, it's just coming up. So this is the first full moon since the vernal equinox, which this year was March 19th. And today, April 7th, is the first full moon since the vernal equinox. And do you know that that has something to do with Easter? The church teaches that the moon is a symbol of the Blessed Virgin Mary because as the moon lights up the earth in the darkness of the night, the moon is not the sun. It merely reflects the light of the sun to the darkness of the world. Likewise, Mary is not the Son of God, but she brings the light of Christ to the world. She brings the light of Christ to our darkness. And so we know that the moon is often associated with the Blessed Virgin Mary. All right, so here we are again, and uh, there's the moon getting brighter and brighter. Um, I did take a look at it through my scope, and uh, as you can tell, it's not quite uh, <clears throat> nightfall yet. It's twilight. <clears throat> the sun had gone down maybe about five minutes ago. <clears throat> and so um, we're going to talk about the moon and what that has to do with Easter. <clears throat> and so um, Easter, uh, as we know, comes every year uh, at springtime. Uh, but it doesn't always fall on the same day. Yes, it always falls on Sunday, but it doesn't always fall on the same date. What determines the date when Easter comes? Did you know it's the cycle of the moon? It's the first Sunday after the first full moon of the vernal equinox. The first Sunday after the first full moon after the first day of spring. So, when is the first day of spring? Well, the first day of spring actually is not a calendar event. We have it on the calendar, but it's not a calendar event. The first day of spring is a natural event. It's when the hours of, of daylight are equal to the hours of darkness. So the first day of spring actually could be the 19th of March, the 20th, or the 21st. Well, the church in her great wisdom has settled on the 21st and has said that every year spring begins on the 21st of March. Or probably better put, by the time the 21st of March rolls around, we know for sure it's spring. And so, if we have a full moon on or after the 21st of March, the following Sunday is Easter Sunday. A lunar cycle is about 27 days. That's the time it takes for the moon to orbit the Earth one time. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so it doesn't have weather to wear down its surface. And so you can see many of the impact craters. One stands out pretty prominently even in this image. It's to the center right way up there, you'll see it's a deep crater. That crater is called Tycho. As you know, the moon has a cycle, a monthly cycle, and uh, every so many days we get a full moon. We get first quarter, and then full moon, and then it starts to wane, and then we go back down to new moon, and a few days later, we see the crescent moon, and it begins to wax and grow, and then we have that first quarter again, and before you know it, another full moon. Most months only have one full moon, but there is one month this year, 
and I believe it's October, where we'll have a full moon at the very beginning of October, and a full moon on the 31st of October, the very last day. Well, I hope you enjoyed my explanation of the connection between Easter and the moon. I also hope you enjoyed doing a little bit of astronomy with me. Today, as you are watching this, is probably Holy Thursday. Holy Thursday is a very special day for us. It's when Jesus met with his disciples for one last time. And we know this as the Last Supper. Also, the mass of the lord's supper that holy thursday mass which is most appropriately celebrated in the evening the thursday before easter it's when jesus gave us those ancient and profound words that the priest uses at every mass to make the bread become the flesh and the wine become the precious blood of jesus these words that jesus spoke at the last supper stand for all eternity as words that save our souls. Happy Holy Thursday, everyone. Good Friday, of course, is the next day when we remember the passion and death of Jesus. It's a very sad day, but also a very powerful day for many people spiritually. We have the reading of the passion, and then we have the special prayers, we usually have a communion service as well. It's the only day of the year when the priest is not allowed to celebrate Mass or to baptize or to preside at weddings or funerals. It's a day of remembering Christ's love for us, his passion. And unfortunately, this year we're not allowed because of the recommendations of social distancing to gather on this very holy and solemn day. Nevertheless, I encourage all of you to watch the Holy Thursday and Good Friday services on the links that I made available to you in a previous video. Also, please keep in mind that Good Friday is not only a day of abstinence from meat, but also a day of fasting. So we are allowed one moderate-sized meal on Good Friday or two small meals. And of course, we're not allowed to have meat on Good Friday. Happy Good Friday, everybody. And then we finally arrive at the joy of the resurrection of the Lord on Easter Sunday. And may especially this year, the joy of Easter be with all of you and with your families, not only for this Easter, but throughout the whole year. God bless you all and happy Easter, everyone.